Simon from SimonWoods.com. I'm feeling slightly fizzy today. I've got four, no, I've got four countries. I've got five sparkling wines, but uh, first two are from Chile. Um, Chile make great sparkling wine? Well, one of these big companies, Valdivieso, uh, in Chile, they are known for their sparkling wine, but not many of the sparkling wines from Chile have made it so far over uh, to the UK. But I just so happen to have two today. First one I've got. It doesn't say on whether it's Method Traditionnel, otherwise known as Method Champenoise, uh, even though you're not supposed to say that because it offends the Champagne people. But we like offending the Champagne people, even though they make lovely wines. Sorry, Champagne people, we don't like offending you. We think you're wonderful. Uh, but it doesn't say on this first one what, how it's made. So it's, the absence of that leads me to believe it's probably not Method Traditionnel. But it is made from 100% Chardonnay. It's Casiero del Diablo uh, from the Limery Valley. Uh, so I think 100% Chardonnay, hasn't got a vintage on, but give it a whirl. And it's got a very, very ripe, gentle, like apple, apple crumbly with a, crumble with a little bit of toffee sauce on. That's the type of thing I smell here. So that, that cooked apple edge and with something ever so slightly toffee-ish. Doesn't feel like it's going to be heavy uh, in, in any respect, but it has got these sort of on the um, sweeter end of uh, the flavour spectrum uh, type of characters. Uh, does that mean it's going to be off dry? Let's about do. Funny, yeah. It's, um, I thought it was going to be quite a bit richer than that. But then when you taste it, it has got this richness. It's got those similar uh, cooked apple type of flavours. But then it's got this seam of mineral minerality coming running through it um, that, keep, that dries it out. Um, so if there is a touch of sweetness there, it's, it's hardly perceptible. You just get these rich, ripe flavours and... Uh, and this mineral note, um, I'd love to see that one given a little bit more time on the lees before they uh, uh, before they do the final bottling in order to just uh, like give it a little bit more toastiness because I think that's potentially rather classy wine. And it's in the Casiero del Diablo. Is it the Reserva Privada? Um, it says Brut Reserva on, so I can't remember how much it's going to be. But um, pretty nice wine, actually. Can't fault that at all. Let's see how we get on with uh, uh, the second Chilean. Uh, Miguel Torrell, Torres, Miguel Torrell, Torres. Um, so we have the 100% Chardonnay. This is 100% Pinot Noir. Doesn't say on the bottle um, whereabouts it's from, or if it does, I can't uh, see it on the back label. So Chardonnay with the first one, those apple flavours. Pinot Noir here. It's more in that red berry, and there's almost a hint of chocolate in there too. Um, and it feels like it's going to uh, maybe not be as exuberantly, um, that, 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 that richness of fruit flesh here, but maybe not the fine-boned minerality of the first one. Let's give it a whirl. It's not quite as subtle as the uh, Chardonnay. It's got this broader flavour. It's funny, the first one smelled like it was going to have this breadth of flavour. This is the one that actually has it. Um, it has got that, that seam of the, the chocolatiness, that, that uh, dusty, you know when you get to, uh, truffles with a dusting of cocoa on? It's, it's that dusting of cocoa that, uh, that comes through here. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to try plonking a little bit of the Chardonnay in there. And uh, I know you're not supposed to do blends like this without giving them a chance to settle down. But uh, it'll be very interesting to see how they get on together. That's really rather good, actually. I, uh, it's got the good bits of both. It's got the... Uh, the chocolate and red fruit of the Pinot, and it's got that, uh, you know, the mineral character comes through, cleans up the finish, and leaves you with this tangy apple character as well. Maybe I should be a winemaker rather than someone who sits and talks to a camera. Um, anyway, let's try the next one. We're in England now, Southridge, uh, from the Ridgeview Estate. This is uh, Lathwaite's own label. Uh, traditional Method, 2008. Did the pink of this on a video uh, reasonably recently. This is the white. I think it's about the same price from knocking on 20 quid. Well, it smells young and fresh. It's 2008, so not this short, still short of its third birthday. Um, and there is that a, a delicate apple character. It's not as out and out ripe apple as um, as there, there was in the first uh, the the, 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 uh, the Casiero. Uh, but it feels like it may be uh, slightly more on the elegant side, or will it just be wishy washy? Let's give it a go. No, it's on the subtle, bready, toasty side. Um, the, what's nice about this one is the fruit's got it's got this bruised apple type of um, um, yeah apple and pear character, just cooked um, orchard fruits if you want to call it that, uh, laying back. And it's got this creaminess as well, um, and you can feel uh, yeah there's a nuttiness and the, the, there's the bread dough character. Don't know whether these had it's had extra time on leaves compared with the other two. Wouldn't be surprised if it if it had, and it's giving this broader flavour. So instead of maybe the flavour spikes that you were getting in the first two, this has got more flavours going on there. 
Um, maybe a touch on the acidic side, uh, so it would benefit from even more leaves aging to sort of try and uh, calm that, 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 those edges, but um, pretty tasty wine. Yeah, almost a hint of honey on there as well. Tasty. Um, New Zealand now. Uh, we are Blanc de Blanc, a traditional method, and Blanc de Blanc in this instance uh, means 100% Chardonnay. It could be other Blancs in there, but uh, it's all Chardonnay. Well, this is uh, on the cheesy side. I stick my nose in there and it's, it really does jump out and sort of makes your eyes pop out slightly. Is it too cheesy? Sometimes I get wines with aromas like this and you think that's just going to take over the entire wine. But um, here uh, it may be that uh, there is enough fruit flesh behind it, but certainly it's hard to get past that cheesiness to start with. I'll have another sniff. Yeah, it's calming down slightly now, and what's coming through is more of this richer, bready, dough type of character. Um, I got a bit of that brioche character in the, uh, um, in the South Ridge, but here it's even more... It, it feels like a, a wine. Sometimes sparkling wines feel like pop. Uh, this feels like a wine, and, uh, but that cheesy edge slightly intrudes. Let's see whether it does when you taste it. It's a very winey sparkler, that. Um, it's, uh, what I mean by that is um, it, it's, uh, there, there's some, there some uh, fizz that uh, it's basically just pop, and others that are things. I, I wouldn't, if, I, if you had me without bubbles, I'd still be really quite nice. Um, but this, this one here, yes, the cheesiness is still there as a factor, but as it calms down, that cheesiness is, uh, starts to dissipate the more you swirl it, um, and you're left with this um, uh, yeastiness, uh, in the way that you get uh, the yeastiness in Fino Sherry, that uh, ever so slight um, nutty floor type of character, um, and the wininess verging on a touch of the cidery, um, but, um, yeah, apples, pears, a uh, bit of hazelnut, maybe even a little touch of pineapple in there. And um, growing on me, one of those that I, I, I thought, I smelt it and I thought, I'm not going to like this at all. But uh, the more I taste it, the more I like it. That cheesiness, though, just is the thing that disturbs me about it. It's still there. Oh, well. So near and yet so far. Let's see how we get on with the final one. From Champagne, um, it's Besserade de Belfonce, Cuvée des Moines, um, Brut Melusine 2002. 2002. And it's got, they, they, the, the cork needed a little bit of coaxing to come out of this one. Um, indication that it's probably been the, the one that the cork's been in the longest. Um, not had didn't have the fizz to force it out. Is that all the better for that? Let's stick your nose in, my nose in, and see. Well, it's interesting. It smells, um, it smells a bit younger than the, uh, uh, the, uh, the Marlborough one, the, the Huya. Uh, so, but it's 18 months older. So, um... What you, how it comes across. There's this toastiness uh, there. It, it does again feel like a winey uh, a, a sparkler, but um, there's a bit more freshness, a bit more toasty bite. Yes, there's some of the brioche character, but it feels like it's still, it's a bit more alive. Also feels like it's going to be a little bit richer. Uh, or is it, no, is the richness going to be uh, as a, a result of extra dosage that they put into uh, soften acidity uh, before they bottle it? Let's have a see. I think, um, I think, this, I think I'm going to prefer this. Yeah, there's a soft, gentle, juicy nuttiness there. Um, lovely fruit round it. Um, it's on the, It's one of those ones where the fruit is not the main event. In, maybe in the first two, the fruit was just a little bit too loud. Maybe if they'd been given sufficient uh, age, uh, the fruit would be underplayed like it is here. So you've got fruit, but you've also got this toastiness, the nuttiness, maybe a touch of chocolate in there. The fruit there is, yeah, this, this, this slight crystallised pineapple, uh, apples, but then there's the nuts, there's the yeast, there's that, uh, yeah, the toasty, um, yeah, toast type of character. And uh, it does feel quite a rich textured wine, and, uh, but it still feels like quite a yummy wine, so I'm going to have another yum. We like that, that's official. Um, Favourite by quite a way, I would say. Um, the one that impressed me, perhaps most of all, out of the other ones, was the Casiero. Um, and, uh, but an interesting set of wines, and um, I'll probably be going to have a glass of the, uh, of the champagne now, um, because I can. See you soon.